So today I want to talk about some recent articles discussing robots replacing workers. Whenever people have been fighting for an increase to the federal minimum wage in the United States, a common retort from the owner class has always been that an increase in the minimum wage would make it so that the cost of workers would become prohibitively expensive, and thus it would become cheaper to automate jobs. With the recent labor movements, we've actually seen that argument quite disproven as instead of seeing that threat come to pass, we've actually seen businesses struggle to function when they've refused to increase wages, and have actually seen a rise in both union activity and workers increasingly quitting their low-paying jobs. As of late, though, the argument of business owners for automation has actually resurfaced in a number of articles, which have come out discussing how robots are being bought in mass to replace workers in the jobs that companies claim they are struggling to hire people for right now. Now, I want to go over a few of those articles and talk about some of the details in them. But first, I actually want to briefly discuss why I think this is actually a sign of desperation from employers. First, I actually find the timing of these articles to be a little suspect, especially as many of them are discussing the ways in which robots are superior to workers. I can only assume that this is an attempt to scare workers into accepting low wages and to move towards the status quo, and to make it so that workers feel replaceable because employers are starting to see that workers are uniting both in unions and in quitting their jobs, and because of the way that la the labor market is right now, Wages are on the rise, and they want to avoid it. Second, I think that this does speak to a desperation of some businesses that are actively seeking robots at this time to replace workers. They are so desperate to hold on to profit margins that they cannot fathom the possibility of paying their workers more. Instead, they would much rather purchase these extremely expensive robots, many of which are still untested. And third, they refuse to accept the reality that robots and artificial intelligence are still not at a place where they can replace human workers fully. At least not on a scale that makes sense, and certainly not in a number of positions. And this is even less likely to hold up in these times, especially when chip shortages are limiting the creation of robotic labor. Never mind the reality that workers who jo whose jobs cannot be automated would need to be paid at an even higher rate in order to maintain business if this were to transpire. As a frustrating aside to all of this, I do want to mention that in a different economic system, in a completely different reality, automation such as this would probably be a great benefit to a lot of people, and I would enthusiastically support much of it. But without a complete overhaul of how we look at labor, work, and the distribution of resources, this would be a detriment to society as a whole. A living UBI with food, shelter, and healthcare covered would be an absolute minimum to allow automation to benefit everyone. And that, again, would be a minimum. We really need to reevaluate how we redistribute uh, resources if we want automation to truly benefit people and not just become a tool for a bunch of people to make a lot of money while everyone else suffers. As it stands now, the reason these businesses, though, are having a hard time filling positions has nothing to do with a labor shortage like they always, always claim, but it's actually a wage shortage, and I cannot emphasize that enough. We need to keep shouting that. It is a wage shortage, not a labor shortage, no matter how many times they try to frame it differently. And I've talked about it a lot on this channel, how these companies are trying to find alternatives in so many different ways to keep their wages low. This has included hiring 14-year-olds, hiring prison labor at slave wages, and even asking for increases in visas to exploit immigrant labor at cheaper rates. So now that we're trying to add robots to that mix, let's see what these business owners have to say. Well, we have an article here from CNN Business that was actually originally in Reuters. America is hiring a record number of robots. Uh, we find that factories and other industrial users ordered 29,000 robots, 37% more than during the same period last year, valued at $1.48 billion, according to data compiled by the industry group the Association for Advancing Automation. That surpassed the previous peak set in the same time period in 2017, before the global pandemic upended economies. 
The rush to add robots is part of a larger upswing in investment as companies seek to keep up with strong demand, which in some cases has contributed to shortages of key goods. At the same time, many firms have struggled to lure back workers displaced by the pandemic and view robots as an alternative to adding human muscle on their assembly lines. Now, I need to point out that this is $1.48 billion that could have just gone to wages, especially in our current economic realities. And that's only for 29,000 robots. And that's not a lot in the grand scheme of things. Yes, robots can do a lot, and they can run in for a long period of time. But they also require upkeep, and they also require maintenance, something that I don't think is being factored into these costs. In addition to that, that's a very expensive price to pay up front for something that you don't even fully recognize if it's going to work or not. Now, in the first nine months of the year, auto-related orders for robots actually grew by 20%. The auto industry has been one of the few industries that have been automating much more frequently than a lot of other industries, and they grew to 12,544 units. According to A3, while orders by non-automotive co automotive companies expanded 53% to 16,355. Now again, in total, that's not that many. And that's not enough to eliminate the need for labor anytime soon. Um, now, one company also in all of this is trying to promote that because they have seven robots, now they're able to work, uh, you know, around the clock with 24-7 shifts because they had a difficult time finding workers to fill the unpopular overnight shifts, even though the company still maintains 250 employees. Now, I need to point this out. People are probably willing to work those shifts, but the fact is, is they're not willing to work it for the wages that you're paying them. And it's probably a lot cheaper based on what these prices are looking at to pay people a living wage rather than actually invest in these robots, especially because we don't know how successful they are going to be at their jobs. And for each specific job, it's going to have to be automated in a very different way. Now, the thing is, uh, you know, this article, the way that it's been written and the fact that Reuters had put it out um, on November 12th as well, uh, this particular set of information has been uh, mentioned in several different articles, as we will come to see. But for a moment, I actually want to stop off at uh, an article talking about what's going on in this image on the screen. We actually find that, according to CNN Business, White Castle thinks a robot can make better french fries. And the article proceeds to spend a good deal of time talking about how employees in fast food restaurants are often subject to a flurry of distractions in the kitchen, which is hot and noisy and gets hectic during peak times. They may get caught up in another task and pull fries out of the fryer too early or leave them in too long. It may be difficult to keep them consistent. But that's where Flippy, the French fry making robot, comes in, who's going to somehow save the day and is being used in White Castle Chicago restaurants. Now, I need to point this out. Uh, employees, if they were actually, you know, if restaurants were actually staffed properly with employees, you wouldn't have the difficulties that is being described here. You could just pay for more people to actually do the jobs. But that's not what uh, they want to invest in. They'd rather try to invest in this technology, which is insufficient and is not going to work, uh, especially right now, and cannot be manufactured on a large scale and still requires an employee to run it. Now, it's unclear how much this technology might catch on and how much it could upend restaurant jobs if it does. Now, I'm going to say flat out, it's not going to. You still need somebody to run this and watch over it. And from what I've seen in the videos of it, uh, it still needs maintenance and it still needs care. So at the very least, you're going to need at least one or two people to watch over it and to make sure things are uh, moving around. But one thing I also want to mention is that any time you have a change in your restaurant, any time you make any little difference in terms of the menu, you're going to need to reprogram that robot, which means you're going to have to pay somebody to do that. Whereas a fry cook or someone that you hire would probably take about five to 10 minutes to recognize they have to move something somewhere else or place something on a different counter. These robots are not going to be programmed to do that. And that's something that is going to come up later on when they try to implement this more often. Now, 
When I talked about the original article uh, being repeated in a lot of ways, we have an article from the Wall Street Journal, companies order record number of robots amid labor shortage. This is done on November 11th, and it's pretty much the exact same article. Um, and uh, the only difference is that they mention a uh, food delivery robot crossing the street, and they have an image of it. And they actually show the robotic dog called Spot, which is basically one of the Digidogs, uh, in ha uh, Honolulu's police department. And they mention here that many U.S. companies have been hard-pressed to find workers amid a nationwide labor shortage. Again, it's a wage shortage, not a labor shortage. The companies don't want to pay people. And some warehouses have actually turned to robots to help with operations. FedEx Corp, for example, is using robots to help sort packages. Researchers and companies are moving on advancing artificial intelligence systems to enable robots to work with wider arrays of objects. But the thing is, they're still not at the place where they're able to replace humans yet. And that means that the labor market is still ripe for humans. And the thing is, is a lot of these places have had the ability to sort packages for a while. Amazon's been doing it for a while, and they still need people in the warehouses. Uh, this is not going to change anytime soon. This is just being done, I think, to scare people, to make it seem like with 4.3 million people quitting their jobs in the, you know, great resignation, that workers are just easily replaceable and that this might actually be a benefit for business. And trust me, it won't in the long run. Now, uh, the Tech Times put out a very similar article as well, again on November 12th. Um, where they talk about the Association for Advancing Automation, but they choose to focus differently and try to talk about how, according to the Wall Street Journal in a different article, companies now view robots as an alternative to humans on their assembly lines, and that the president of the Association for Advancing Automation said that companies consider robots part of the workforce because businesses could not find the right people to do the work. And who are the right people and what makes a person right for this job? It means that they're willing to act like robots, that they're willing to just accept their low wages, to listen to orders, and not put up any fight about their own needs and to be treated as human. That is the only thing that they could possibly mean for this. And the thing is, humans need to be recognized as what they are. Workers are human. And until you reach the point where you can actually replace them, you should probably stop making the threats because it's not happening again anytime soon. Now, we also have here uh, another article where it actually goes even deeper into this that says workers are obsolete as robots do the dirty work. Market forces and technology converge, uh, convergence are setting the stage for a robot takeover. This is on November 10th where they're talking about how in the uh, hospital and education industry, we're seeing an increase in the amount of automated robots. And of course, they make sure to mention, again, the great resignation within the U.S., where four million Americans have quit their job. And the, they, they prescribe the shifting office culture and changing demand during the pandemic, having a large impact on play, things like janitorial services, which is why robots need to enter in and be able to uh, allow technology to overhaul the system. Now, I'm going to be real with you. There's no good way that you are actually going to create an effective janitorial robot to do a lot of the jobs that are involved in janitorial services. Things are going to get missed. Things are going to get overlooked. And even a lot of the robots that have been put in stores tend to just tell people, hey, a spill happened, rather than actually cleaning them up themselves. The technology still isn't there yet, but they're acting like it is. And yeah, cleaning robots have been around for a while, and they work in ver uh, various environments. But are they still going to be able to go in and clean a toilet? Are they still going to be able to go in and be able to clean a service station? If the service stations change, are they going to be able to adapt? Until AI gets to that point, you're still going to need a human touch. And honestly, what this tells me is you're actually going to need less of managerial positions than you are going to need workers who can actually actively make decisions on the fly. In fact, most workers are going to probably end up assisted by a lot of these robots rather than being replaced by them. Now, uh, we also have an article here from Business Insider that talks about how a robotic CEO just revealed what execs really think about the labor shortage. People want to remove labor. 
Uh, restaurants have been struggling to hire workers for months. They've actually turned to QR codes where diners can view menus rather than having a waiter bring them one. Cracker Barrel has rolled out a mobile app that lets customers pay for meals, and McDonald's has started testing automated drive through ordering at 10 Chicago locations. Dave & Buster's plans to expand its contactless ordering, effectively getting rid of many restaurant jobs humans once did. Now, again, this needs to be said. There's not enough artificial intelligence to deal with customer service with having a person there to actively deal with and talk to a customer. You cannot pay for that through a machine at this point. That's not available. Whenever they've replaced jobs in supermarkets or jobs in uh, pharmacies with uh, the automatic tellers, you often have to have a person standing there and still watching over those machines, often being overworked and managing multiple re uh, registers. And the thing is, is I think you're going to find that more and more people are not willing to be underpaid for that kind of job in the future, especially. Uh, and although uh, Business Insider has pointed this out, they did take the steps to actually mention the important thing in all this. Many businesses may be increasingly turning to robots to do the work humans once did, but there is a solution to keeping humans in the labor force. Hiking pay. As many places who have started raising their wages have actually found that they're actually a bit overstaffed. One place raised their wages from $11 to $14 an hour and was able to do that. I've seen other articles coming out from Business Insider that talked about wages being raised to the $20 to $25 range and how these businesses are not having any issue keeping employees and they don't have to work uh, worry about investing in these long-term projects of robots that are going to need to be replaced in a short period of time because these prototypes are not going to do the full extent of the job and they're certainly not going to replace that human touch that you get from having an actual human dealing with these situations. Now, we also have an article that came from a local news station in Pennsylvania that talked about how jobs getting replaced by machines is a scary thought for a lot of workers. But most of the time, you still need eyes and ears to watch those machines. I don't foresee this army of robots moving in and taking over everyone's jobs. I've been doing this a long time, and it's always what you hear from people. It isn't happening, and I don't believe it's going to happen soon. You still need people to do jobs, and there are some jobs that you might want to eliminate the type of work where a person's doing, something repetitive, and something that might injure them. And I'm totally on board with that. Again, especially if we change the way that we distribute resources. Having something that gets rid of repetitive, boring jobs, something that gets rid of jobs that might injure people. But again, this is why I think that especially as you see a lot of software being able to set schedules and deal with management issues much more efficiently and with a lot less um, aggression and anger, uh, you, you know, you're going to see a lot of these managerial positions start to get replaced. Uh, whereas workers are going to end up working alongside these robots, trying to do a lot of these jobs. And again, they're going to need to be paid a lot more for it. But as this person said, right now it seems there's not a huge appetite for those type of jobs anyway. That's why many businesses can't find enough people to fill them. And that's where I need to point out that the lack of appetite is again because of the wages. And we keep coming back to that. All of these articles keep pointing out, oh, there's not enough workers. We don't know where to find workers. But again, as Business Insider pointed out, if you just increase wages, there will be workers. There will be people willing to take that. And again, people should be getting the full extent of their labor, but at least if they're getting an increase in wages, they'll be able to pay for their rent at the end of the month during our current economic times. Now, one more article to go over briefly. We have Bloomberg here on November 6th. The rise of robots speeds up uh, in the pandemic with U.S. labor scarce. One third of all companies, according to a Federal Reserve survey, is actually seeking automation to replace workers. Domino's, for example, wants to be able to replace the amount of labor is required to produce dough balls and uh, Hormel uh, Food Corps. Uh, said that the maker uh, of Spam and Skippy, the company, is ramping up our investments in automation because of the, quote, tight labor supply. Again, there is no tight labor supply. You just need to pay people a living wage. Now, unions, uh, thankfully, Bloomberg did mention this at least, unions have long seen automation as a threat, and it is under our current economic realities. Without something in place to make it so that people can actually get paid, you'll end up seeing what's described here. 
companies will uh, say they want to automate, they have one goal in mind, to eliminate your job and put more money in their pockets. We're going to need to fight this for 100 years. And the fact of the matter is, as long as we're under capitalism and our current structures, yes, we're going to have to keep fighting that. Why? Because as long as business owners own all of the... Um, the industries, as long as it is kept from people, and as long as things move in the direction of automation, and if we were to actually fully automate things, we're going to end up in a place where people are not being paid. And that's going to spell disaster without sort of some sort of at least UBI program, but likely a lot more than that. And honestly, I'd like to see a redistribution of resources, especially if things ever did reach a point where they became fully automated, though I still have my doubts about that happening anytime soon, that at the very least, people would have their basic needs met. But likely that we'd equally share in the wealth and resources available and do away with something as foolish as trying to deal with owning these type of machines, especially with the way things are happening. Why would somebody magically get more resources for having a robot run the resources and tools and machines? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't even make sense in our current system, to be honest. Now, some economists have actually warned that a automation could actually make America's income and wealth gaps worse. And again, if we change the way that things are distributed, it will not. If we keep things the way they are, it most certainly will. So with all of this, I do want to say that the constant threat of workers being laid off in favor of robots and automation has been manipulatively used in order to drive down wages and prevent minimum wages from increasing and also make workers feel entirely replaceable. And these articles are no different in this regard. And I, again, don't think it's entirely a coincidence that during this time, especially with as many of them mentioned the Great Resignation, that this is somehow tied to an understanding that this is one way for these companies to get out of all this. And it's a desperation to not raise wages or actually pay people a living wage and to try to hold on to as many profits as possible. Despite the desperate attempts by employers to scare their workers, automation is not going to replace people or stop the current labor movement anytime soon. That reality uh, cannot and will not happen in the near future because the technology just doesn't exist. And the reality really is if automation was at that level and was already cheap enough, it would have already replaced us under capitalism. It would have already happened, but it's not there yet. And even with the increased wages, the technology is still not there. So no, it's not happening anytime soon. Now, perhaps one day in a different economic system where resources are distributed equitably, we could actually see automation be of great benefit and actually help a lot of people. It could reduce work, make lives easier, and make it so that we have relatively uh, problem-free and mostly leisure-filled lives. But right now, let's not let the false threat of employers limit our movements and stop us from continuing to organize. So with that said, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications. You can follow me on Twitter, check out my Discord, and support me on Patreon. All of those links are in the description down below. That said, my name is Anarchist Terra, and I thank you for watching.